This is our story. Hello guys, I hope you are well. Um, I am Cyborg Angel, for those who don't know, and I'm gonna be presenting a discussion today with uh, with Brian, with Amelia, and with Benjamin from Quantic Dream. I hope you guys are excited. How are you all? I'm gonna introduce them. So first off, and bear with me because I'm controlling the scene myself. So first off, <laughs> let's go ahead and introduce. Brian Dechart and Amelia Blair. Let me just unmute you guys. Hang on a second. Whoop. There we go. Good to see you. Hello, 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 hello. Good to see you as well. Um, and also we have... Sorry, the audio is a bit low for us. It's hard for us to hear you. Oh, okay, for me. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello everyone. everyone. A little bit louder Bonjour. if I can. Let me just move everything. Hello, Brian. Hello, Cyborg. Hello, Amelia. Hello. How are you? Très bien, merci. Good. I'm going to go and turn my headphones on as well. Ça va très, très bien. Let me see if I can turn the gain up on my microphone. And then you cannot hear Cyborg. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah, she's, she's very quiet. Very quiet all of a sudden, <laughs> and I'm not too sure why. There we go. Let me we see can if hear I you can. now. You can? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, now it's good. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, uh, if you guys can just introduce yourselves, say what you do in the game, and maybe get a bit of information to the audience who may not know which i'm i would be very surprised if they didn't <laughs> well can i uh can i let benjamin do that i feel like that's a good thing yeah who are you benjamin is. dibling oh, do you want i dig in <laughs> oh my god um i was uh, simply the shooting director on the project that mean uh, preparing and uh, shooting all the animation you see in the game it's true. And Benjamin was on set with us every single day at Quantic Dream in the volume, as they call it. It's a big gray room where we record all of the uh, performance capture, motion capture, the stunts. Uh, and Benjamin is there to help facilitate all of that. And next to me is Amelia Rose Blair. Um, Say hi. <laughs> hello, everyone. Um, I play the blue haired Tracy and uh, some of the other Tracys in Detroit Become Human, uh, which was awesome. And I got to work with this one right here, as well as Mr. Benjamin Dibling. Yeah. And I'm Brian, and I play Connor. Awesome. Good to have you guys with us. Thank you all for joining. <laughs> and yes, thank you for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed the intro or, and the trailer just before we started there. We had to just make sure that everything was right before we switched the screen. So I appreciate everyone sticking around and waiting. Um, I've yeah. got a number of um, things that I wanted to sort of discuss, but I know that I want to find out a lot more about the way that you captured things and how it was, how it was trying to imagine what was meant to be in front of you that wasn't actually in front of you at that time, because it was all caught and put into the game. You didn't have a scenery when you did it. Right. Yeah, none. That's the biggest difference between, well, one of the biggest differences between working on a film and a TV show versus a performance capture for a video game. You need someone like Benjamin Dibling to explain to you what's going on all the time. There's uh, usually a grid, oh, there is a grid on the stage, and then different parts of this grid correlate to a map of the concept art and the space uh, as it will be rendered in 3D. Benjamin, you want to talk a little bit about how you would like set that up for us on set? Yeah, and you have a huge difference. Usually on film, you you kind of decide the lights, the camera, the acting on set. And when we shot a video game, we are really focused when we shot in motion capture about only acting. It's the only thing we is acting and um, usually I begin by a brief with David Cage who is a game director in this uh, project and after that and we have the shooting with actor and we are really focused on only one thing that's really cool compared to a movie it's very true yeah like, it's very freeing and yeah. how many how many cameras are on the the uh, performance capture stage? Oh, oh, I around eighty, and but we have four wheel camera shooting like video uh, reference to explain to all the team cannot be on stage uh, what we shot. 
you're cutting out a little bit there, but we can, I kind of, I think we can gather what you said. Are you guys, um, Brian and Amelia, are you getting a bit of a, of cutting out with the Skype call, or are you okay? No, we're good. We can hear. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As All long right. as everybody in the chat feels good with the levels and everything, it's good for us. Yeah. 80 cameras, though, that, that is immense. Like, to have that many, uh, is there, like, one person that controls all of those, or do they just sit and they're sort of uh, static and you look back at them later? Uh, they're not actually, they're in fact, um, infrared cameras. So they're not, they're recording uh, the precise location of these uh, markers on our face and also the markers on our uh, suits. And so these points assign to different positions on the 3D model in game, and then they animate from those points. So there are reference cameras on set, meaning that they have uh, video um, to look back on to say, oh, what exactly is this? And they can, you know, check for details and things because all of our props are very crude. So we could be holding a piece of cardboard uh, to say it's a cup or to say it's a, uh, a clue or something. Um, but in any case, they have the reference video so they can look back at it and it's a video like we, you know, like an HD camera. But uh, on the wall, it's all, uh, we're surrounded by infrared um, which are picking up these micro movements on the LED, uh, not the LED, the um, re reflectors. Marker. So is that the same amount of um, LED cameras uh, as there are dots on your, or those little specks on your suit? Uh, is that the there's same no, amount? Yeah, um, there's no, the uh, roughly, but it's to... not, it's not like there's one marker per camera. There, oh, okay, there are, right. there are 86 markers on our face and roughly 80 cameras around us. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. immense. Um, how was it shooting the scene together? Because I know that without giving anything away too much, because we're not going to be talking about spoilers, just for the chat. Right, spoiler-free. Um, but uh, how was it shooting possibly a scene together uh, for you and you and Amelia? So Brian and Amelia. Oh, you mean I... with my love, Benjamin Dibling? <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful. Oh, uh, it was really that, cool. Yeah, because I think that the chat for some, unless they have played the game, and again, we're not gonna give away any spoilers, won't know who or where you guys would be shooting together, or if you did, right. but how, how was it? Was it awkward? Did, was it was it okay for you, you and Amelia to be shooting together, that scene? I mean, if we shot together, if. hypothetically speaking, uh, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was it was wonderful. Brian is such an incredible scene partner. Um, he's so generous, and we all, all met on set together. That's that's how we met. We, we were playing boyfriend and girlfriend in an indie film that we did called Commencement. So it felt very familiar and very safe. And also, you know, Brian had been working on the game uh, for almost a year at that point, or more than a year. So he was a veteran, and he. Uh, he, he helped me feel very safe and um, confident. And so, yeah, it was fantastic. And, ben, and Benjamin helped me feel safe and confident. And it's just kind of like, you know, pay it forward. Awesome. Because it's really important to, to imagine the first day on motion capture is all the time really weird. Like really, really, really weird. <laughs> <laughs> and, and imagine you're in a kind of pajama and you're around, <laughs> around you. We have yeah, you have 20 people, you have a lot of marker on your face, you have 30 pages of script to do, and you're like, okay, let, let's let's go try. And and the first day is really weird. You have a technical tech, you are you need to make a T pause with your body before each take. And yeah, the first day is complicated. And thanks to Brian, the first day with Amelia was wonderful because Brian explained everything before oh. David on <laughs> explained that. Awesome. That's yeah. brilliant. Like, I can't believe that you had 30, 30 pages of script. Obviously, you had to go through so many scenes together, but 30 pages just for day one, just thrown in. That's, I mean, yeah. I've got to ask, how do you have to memorize every single piece of script? Those full 30 pages, is that something that you have to then store in your head before you go on stage and go, right, I know all of this before you can do it? Or is it just a case of referring yeah. back? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you pretty much have to. I mean, they, we shoot so quickly because on a film or a television set, you have hair and makeup that would come in. You have your wardrobe might need to change. They're going to reorganize the set or the lights. Uh, so you have these windows of downtime where you can go back and refresh your um, 
yourself on the script or you can take a little break. And uh, not that we didn't ever take a break at Quantic Dream, but we shot <laughs> so much back to back to back because there was nothing to change. We could go from shooting on the rooftop to shooting in the basement in no time at all. There was, you know, sometimes they would move out like a approximation of a car or they'd move a platform out because some actors ending up higher than others but uh for the most part the set is always the same which means you have to be ready with the whole script at the beginning and brian was a machine with his memorization skills like <laughs> yeah I, I was so impressed and there was a, a couple he was in paris filming and i was back home and we would skype each other lines <laughs> which was really cool and uh yeah he was a machine with the memorization is that, would yeah, you say I, this? I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I remember a, a funny a funny fact is the first time we call uh, on Skype with Brian uh, after we decide he play a Connor, we, we have this call and he explained how he memorized everything. And I was fascinated by, by the fact he have a method to learn everything and at work. Like, I, I, I don't know if I can say I can share that, Brian, but... He Sounds like you're doing like, it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, for example, it's all the cold answer of Connor was a triangle for you, and you associate all the time that cold answer is triangle is the first answer to do. And and sometime, like after four or five days, we say, okay, let's go for this one. He said, can we do the cold one before the warm one, before the tense one? And I was <laughs> like, yeah, of of course, I, I, I remember, <laughs> remember everything, and I was like, yeah, of course, I cannot say no. Okay. Yeah, it, was, it was useful to break down the script by, um, a, uh, if anybody's familiar with uh, D&D or like other RPG games, you can, you can define your uh, character's alignment. And so for Connor, without getting into any spoilers, there are obviously different ways you can play the game. And so uh, Benjamin and I, we talked about this map of the potential options. I wish we had the map that all the players have at the end of the scene where it shows you that whole map. Benjamin, where was that on set? <laughs> I <laughs> like that, that would have been so helpful. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we made our own kind of approximation of the set so that then no matter what we were shooting, if we were shooting completely out of order, because sometimes we would film something from the middle of the story and then the end of the story back to back, you know, or completely different potentialities in the same day. And just, just wow. to explain to people, and 30 pages a lot, and to compare to movie, usually we shot uh, between three and five page by day. And... and it's for that it's crazy to shoot on 30 pages by day. Yeah, that's insane. That's a, that's a lot to memorise and to do. But I can understand why you did it from, from going from like a sort of casual scene and a more calm to the intense scene at the end. Because obviously mixing and matching in that, and that was one of the questions that I wanted to ask, would make it a lot more difficult. Um, to sort of switch from one emotion to the other emotion to the other. Um, but how was it right. doing it for different scenes ongoing the more you did did it become easier to shoot the more intense scenes after shooting a really calm one and so on i think that uh well you want to take that benjamin no no you can begin okay well i i think that the uh the first two scene the first thing that we shot was the hostage negotiation the demo that came out the playstation uh what was it 2016 e3 trailer um, and we shot that, and what was really helpful for me was that we shot those scene that those scenes in two days, wow, and then I yeah. went to E3 and saw them present this trailer and the behind closed doors demo of that scene. And for me, this is like on set. Benjamin is telling me there's a sniper over here, there's a cop floating in the pool over here, the helicopter shows up over here, and he <laughs> mapped it out for me in space you know, like a dungeon master in D&D <laughs> telling me this is where everything is. And uh, so then what, once we were moving into the story and then I got to see the concept art turn into this 3D environment that was created for the sake of the demo and the trailer, um, I was immediately on board. So then I think after that point, 
going back to film the rest. We went back and filmed a bunch with Clancy and then again a third time in Paris. And the second and third trip back to Paris were fantastic because I just knew that all the people at Quantic Dream knew what they were doing and they were going to be able to pull it off and that uh, they were really telling me the truth when they said you don't have to do anything uh, extra, that you can really just act as you would in the theater and they're going to be able to take this and, and translate it into the animation. So uh, it was yeah. amazing. Okay. And, and, and interesting thing is when you act on camera, it's completely different to act at 360 because is what we do in motion capture is you, your acting is it is for an audience at 360 degree and for camera it's completely different and you understand that really quickly. Oh, okay. All right, that's really interesting. I'm, I'm just thinking like, um, shooting, I mean, things without, oh, again, I don't want to give any, it's really hard to ask questions without right? wanting yeah. to give away any of the story. Um, okay, all and right. You, know, you, could to you could totally spoil this story and someone would play and be like, that didn't happen. Yes, that is very, <laughs> that is very true. To spoil it or not spoil it. Yeah, exactly. And you are very right with that. Um, but we're going to try and be a little bit more, I don't know, selective with how we ask and how we answer the questions. Okay. Just for those who haven't got to the end of the game or anything like that. So that's why we're trying to do that chat just for anyone who knows. Also, I do see alerts coming through and I will be um, going through them and uh, speaking to you guys about them after this particular section. So thank you very much for all of those. Um, also in the chat, for those who don't know, are links um, for Amelia, Brian and Benjamin. So you can go follow their social media and Brian's Twitch because he also streams now and has been doing amazingly well. Um, you're going to be able to see him stream the actual game himself. Um, I can't remember which bit you're up to now. I'm trying to think. Do you remember we're what chapter? On, uh, ch we're about to start chapter nine. So we just right, played uh, Marcus's scene broken. Right, so there you go. So you're going to be able to catch that on Sunday as well, guys. And I will be there as well. Um, but I'm just going to ask um, a few more questions that I've got written down. Let me just have a little look here. Uh, did you prefer the, the longer scenes or were they all very, very shortly done? Like very sh short scenes that you added together? Or were there long scenes and which one did you prefer if so? that you backed it out. Benjamin, I think you can speak to this because Benjamin was there for all of the characters filming all of the days, whereas I, I only know about a third of the story. So Benjamin, what's it like in total? Uh, if I prefer long scene or short one, is yeah. that? And, and to be honest, that depends on the theme of the scene and that depends on of of what we shot, of the character and and the, the cool thing is we're shooting a game like Detroit is every scene is different. If you compare and at the game like Red Dead Redemption, you know all the game will be a Western. And when we shot Detroit, you shoot uh, one day, you shot a really small and project, and the next day you shoot a horror project to not spoil, but the people will play this scene, know what I mean. And you have uh, a war scene, uh, uh, really uh, a fight scene. And that was really cool to to switch all um, between between each day is different. Is it, is it clear? Yes, yeah, it's yeah. clear. Also, Benjamin, I want to take a split second to tell you that my uh, I'm hosting Cyborg Angel's channel on mine right now, and the chat is all just about how you have an incredible French accent, and they all love you. <laughs> uh, I told you. I, I, I say I'm really sorry for my really strong French accent, and every day is a fight to <laughs> to speak better English. It's charming. We you, love it. You're doing great. Back over to you, Cyborg. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to ask as well, if you could play any other character in the game or a future game, what kind of game, what kind of character would it be to Amelia and Brian? My love. I think I'd want to do a character that had some superpower, some huh. supernatural character. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, I would want to play Benjamin Dibling in a video game. <laughs> <If> I could. <laughs> uh, 
you know, I, t- to me, playing doing the playthrough on Twitch has been awesome because uh, I don't know about Kara or Marcus's storyline at all. I mean, I know things that happen in their story, but I don't know the sort of intimate level of, you know, okay, I can make this decision or I can find this clue. You know, the game for me with Connor is more about like seeing how the creative team and the animators and everybody built it together and how it all is coming to life. But uh, it's really fun for me to play as Kara and Marcus because I don't, it's like I'm playing completely blind. Yeah. Which is a lot of fun. Okay. Um, and with regards to, I'm just trying to figure out where I am here. Um, I want to play the fish. The fish. <laughs> we still don't know what happens with that. Is there another story behind that? Is there a reason? Does it change anything? There's got to be. There's got to be something else to do with that. Yeah. Spoiler free chat. Sorry, <laughs> that's, gotta that's go. It. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. What was? What's? I'm just trying to think of which one I should ask without, again, without spoilers. By the way, I have to say, your hair is really cool. Oh, thank I'm, you. Uh, I'm very much admiring <laughs> it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it takes forever to keep it like this, honestly. The red Same face. The so chair, much. the whole thing. It's thank just. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm going to blush now. I'm trying she, not to fangirl with you guys she, here. She's, she's, she's oh been my on gosh. Twitch for a while. <laughs> hey, Cy- Cyborg Angel, how long have you been on uh, streaming on Twitch? I've, you're, you're a total pro. Yeah, I, I've been. Oh, I, I don't know about pro. I try to be as pro as possible, but I've been on here for. for just over two years and i've been partnered for just over a year um i was actually i've actually this june so it's june now so i've been full time for exactly a year um nice. now as well so thank you some cheers and <laughs> for this uh, year of being a so, partner yeah it's i mean life has completely changed for me and again that is just thanks to twitch and all of the support that i get on here so i do appreciate it very much um well, I appreciate but all yeah. your help because if anybody yeah, no knows problem. about my Twitch channel, sometimes uh, sometimes it's a total mess and we're just trying to figure it out. <laughs> and yeah, people like uh, Cyborg Angel and Not a Bot and uh, Dude Two Eight Eight, all these guys that are uh, Twitch is an incredible community. Everybody's super supportive and positive and welcoming. Very. So yeah, I appreciate it. It really is. It really is. There's there's so much positivity that you can find on Twitch and even for me when i'm not having a good day it's now my place to go to cheer up (laughs) so it's 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 great it's like i've made that for everyone else and at the same time they they sort of give that back to me so it is awesome um with regards to uh filming for a game would you possibly look into with the future being vr or possibly being vr would you possibly Mm. look into and this goes for all of you working on vr films and vr games that were going to be coming out soon would you possibly get look into acting for that because that's not just the scene that you can see and where they want you to see that's that somebody can walk the whole way around you in that film or in that that game you know i had a bit of the feeling on set when filming especially with clancy brown because there's this thing that happens in video games right where you have this you know every video game has a version of this where there's a character that's like leading ahead of you and then has lines that are like all right come on let's go get over here so that if you're walking into a wall or whatever you you're you're led into the story and with hank when we went back and started filming i had this feeling of being kind of in vr almost already on the performance capture set because here i am with this this lead character that's directing me through the storyline and I'm following him, but there's no environment. So for me, playing through the game is a little bit like VR already because I've been to these places and imagined all this stuff, but now finally it's like in a full environment. So I think VR is VR and AR. uh, I'm all about it. Really cool. We went to VR LA uh, recently and it was very, very interesting to be there because I haven't really experimented that much with VR and it was, it was crazy. It was like stepping into different dimensions. It was yeah. really cool. I would just say I really like VR and I love doing games like this, but I'm really a lot motion sickness uh, trying to do that. Yeah, me too. Me oh, too. Oh no, you'll get over it eventually. I promise. Just keep trying. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> um, but um, I have um, a game designer at County Grimm told me all the time, more you do, uh, VR lets you do uh, motion sickness, and it's for that I'm trying a lot of things. I and I, I I have a French uh, French friend director. I uh, really 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 specialize on that, and 
and he sent me a lot of good movie to watch and good stuff to watch. Yeah, I'm, I think it's just a new tool to make story and it, it, it's not the objective, it's just a tool to say story. Okay, okay, so now more of a creative question. So if you had to imagine me in Detroit Become Human, what sort of character would I play and how would it pan out? Deviant, <laughs> definitely a deviant. <laughs> <laughs> Red haired Tracy. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, it's a trap because we don't know you really well. And I will say, yeah, uh, a deviant Tracy with Amelia. You make a, a good duo. I like yeah. that. Well, I like I the idea like of that. Like a, like a, there could be a, there's a hint of revolution here because I yeah. know, I know that uh, Cyborg Angel has a cyborg army, if I'm not mistaken. I've, I've tuned into her it? chime, uh, into her uh, Twitch stream a couple times, and the cyborg army is a real thing. Yeah, maybe like a, a North or a yeah, Marcus. Yeah, kind somewhere of between like a North wow. and a Tracy. Somewhere in there. Wow. That's awesome. Bye I think it's a nice, nice mix between the two. <laughs> okay, so now regarding you guys, um, with gaming, <laughs> what was your first game console or handheld gaming device? Monsieur Dibling? Uh, my, my, you know, my nickname is the old band, but I'm not really old. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I have I have three older brothers, and they play a lot of video games. Thanks to them, it's because of them I'm working now. And I think the first huge remember I have is Rick Dangerous on Atari. Oh, That's wow. a really old game, and it's it's like Uncharted before Uncharted. Like really, if you if you want to try. Just Google that is Rick Dangerous, and and yeah, and after I, I don't know, I play a lot, um, but Rick Dangerous is my first memories, and the first video game I finish is uh, Zelda: Link to the Past. Oh. Ah. What game. about you, Amelia? What, what was your favorite uh, favorite or first video game? I was really into Guitar Hero. Um, I would have a lot of. Uh, competitions with my sister especially as to how who would get the song the most perfect um but i i really loved guitar hero and then i also had game boys but i didn't really have that many video games when i was growing up my parents said it wasn't really something that they bought for us so it was a it was a newer thing for me uh when guitar hero came out it was a big deal that we got to own that mm -hmm. Uh, I think our, our first, we had a, the original NES was our first, uh, you know, obviously with uh, Super Mario Bros, uh, Duck Hunt, um, the, uh, there's an Olympic game where they had like a track pad that came out, like Dance Dance Revolution, where it had little pads that you could <laughs> run and place yeah. on. Uh, that was like the beginning of gaming for me. And then when we were, when we moved, uh, my family moved to Michigan and uh, we got a PlayStation for Christmas and we wanted so badly for Christmas an N64 because all of our friends had N64 and we got this PlayStation and my brother and I were like, what is a PlayStation? <laughs> Put in Crash Bandicoot and we completely changed our minds. We yeah. like flipped immediately from like, we have to play GoldenEye <laughs> to we will only play Crash Bandicoot all the time. <laughs> Did you know that um, Duck Hunt is actually on VR now? They've got a VR version of it where you actually hold a gun. Of Duck Hunt yeah. of in Duck VR? Hunt. Yeah, I've streamed yeah. it on oh, here. Let's go. Next time I do VR, I'll stream it again so you can see it. But yeah, that, that is an actual, and it's brilliant. It, it's done so well. You actually go into the game. So it's like you're playing the game, and then all of a sudden you go into the TV. So if you turn around, it's like you're inside it. Whoa. But you're playing it. Yeah, it's, br it's brilliant. It is brilliant. <laughs> 2018, people. Welcome to it. That's it, exactly. Just just had something and I don't know for you guys but I, I remember all all the time a flashback with a good memories with a video game I don't know when I remember the first time I go back to my place and I have uh, my family buy a PlayStation one I I remember the first time I have Game Boy and it's really hard to say I have one memories but I think we are generation grew up with video game and that helped us a lot that's mm. true yeah, no, video games, I think, uh, well, I mean, I, I've, I've played since Atari days. I remember my first Atari I bought from a car boot sale. Um, <laughs> I think it was just like a couple of pounds, but I remember playing the, I think it was Adventure something. 
adventure I can't even remember the name of it but it was the Atari with the little the, the, the analog stick and the one red button that was it that's all you had <laughs> on it um but we won't we won't keep too long would you say about a couple of more minutes guys and should we do a giveaway the giveaway that you have now sure I've got uh, two things if you if you're down to give yeah, them away. Yeah, 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 go, I'll go you, ahead. I'll, I'll let you run that on your uh, on your channel. Okay, all right. So for those who are in any of the other chats that are being hosted, in order to enter this giveaway, you need to be typing into the Cyborg Angel channel. Um, I'm cool. sure somebody link will, that, will link that. Yeah, so you are aware of which one to type in, just in case you think that it's being entered. All right. <clears throat> so if I just call it Detroit Become Human. Excuse the really loud keyboard. <laughs> cool. Um, All right, everybody to... on, uh, on our channel should be jumping over to you right now. Awesome. So it should be um, in order to en enter, and you do need to be following. I think the only thing that's set up is you need to be following in order to enter, but it is exclamation mark DBH giveaway. And you can type that in the chat right now. And it should register that. Hang on one second. Right now. Now I've, now I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> now I've done it. Um, but while that they're entering that, and you have two things, did you say? What's the first thing for? Yeah, so, so check can... this out. Uh, Amelia and I went to uh, Michigan, to Detroit, for the premiere event of Detroit Become Human. And they had an event called Detro Detroit 2038, which you can search hashtag Detroit 2038 and see stuff from the event. But they had protesters protesting the event that androids ought to instead be free and we have some cool signs here like this one it says we can be creative and it's a poster with uh this is guillaume signature guillaume is the producer at quantic dream uh we have david cage signature you can go ahead and sign all of his checks and uh up here we have adam williams the writer and over here is Greg, who's our uh, associate game director. And Amelia and I will sign it right now, in fact, so that it has two more signatures. Yay. And if Signs Benjamin Dibling well. could just teleport over here, we could get him to sign it too. In like there a week go. or something? <laughs> you need to wait a couple of days, my buddy. <laughs> uh, no, ben Benjamin's coming. We're importing him for Oh, uh, he's for coming E3. to visit you. Oh, nice. You're going E3 together. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. It's my first E3. I'm so happy. Aw. <laughs> Cool. And, just... and then the second thing, oh, sorry, real quick, if we want to do a, a yeah, second no, giveaway. Yeah, um, yeah. These were sent to me by a fan named uh, Rusted Blades in Japan, but this is, oh, wow. I might be this wrong, but it's um, Famitsu. Is that Famitsu, close? Yeah. yeah. And, and it's a 52 page spread of uh, Detroit Become Human. It's got a bunch of cool interviews. Uh, it's basically an art book of all of this really, really fantastic stuff and, and shows a bunch of behind the scenes photos and things from, from set, uh, interviews with the creative have a, team. A, you have a picture of you with a, with a rifle, no? A picture of me with a rifle? I think so. Yeah, I think I take this one on stage. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you took the photo. Yeah, there's, ah. um, there, there's a bunch of cool uh, photos of the, the motion tracker dots and things like that. Um, it's really cool. Here, so we'll, we'll sign these two for giveaways. So we'll let you lead how that works. Simon. Okay, so, right. So if we, if you guys just type that in the chat, I'm going to give you a couple more seconds and then I'm going to pick a winner. We'll announce the winner in the chat and if uh, the mods can then tag that person again as well. Um, you will have 60 seconds to type in the chat just to make sure that you are there and we will send you a DM asking for your details so I can forward that on. Um, so the first one is for the poster that says we... The creative one. Yeah, yeah, we can be creative. We can be creative. By the creative team at Quantic Dream from the premiere. There you go. Are you ready, guys? Good luck. That's the first giveaway is being picked now. Sleepy Anne. Sleepy <laughs> Anne, you have won that giveaway. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Sleepy uh -huh. Anne. Keep typing that in the chat because we are going to be drawing a winner from uh, for the next one for the magazine in just a second. Um, I do want to ask uh, one more question. If you could, so this is again to all of you guys, if you could sum up the game in three words, just three words, how would you sum it up? <laughs> That's a difficult one. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say save fish, but that's too simple. 
uh, I think that I think choice really matters. I will choice say really fight matters. for freedom. Oh wow, that's fight a good for one. Freedom. Damn, that's way better than mine. That's a good one. You should you should be like a director. <laughs> Something like. Okay, we, we usually do the 60 second timer for you to type in the chat if you have one. So Sleepy Ann, if you're in the chat, if you can just type anything in the chat right now, or we'll, we'll be redrawing just so we know we can contact the person via whispers straight away. I'm gonna give you a little bit longer because we, we have a delay, obviously a couple of seconds, but we still have a delay on the stream. So I'll, I'll wait a second. Okay, guys, are you ready for a redraw? Because somebody else may be winning that. So Ooh. stick around. Somebody else may be winning it. Remember to speak, speak in the chat within 60 seconds. Redraw, and we're redrawing in now. <laughs> there we go. Denny Blanco. Denny, are you here? Congratulations, Denny. Congratulations, you Denny. Let's, so yes, assuming you are here. Wait, hey, there you are. Pog champ indeed. Pog champ indeed. Congrats, Denny. Congrats. And we have the one more. We have that for the magazine. And that's yes, the signed that's magazine. Cool magazine. Signed and this is, by Amelia. And this is thanks to uh, Amelia and Brian, who are actually sending these out themselves. Um, and they have a ton more giveaways, which I'm going to be telling you about, which is going to happen on Sunday, if I'm right. Am I right, Brian? Yeah, yeah. You're right. So I'll be, okay, I'll explain that after this giveaway. But you guys have uh, a load more chances to possibly win something on Sunday as well. And that's with Brian on Brian's Twitch. So can we get his Twitch in the chat too? Okay, so I'm gonna allow entries again. So if you didn't get to type it before I start drawing winners, type it again, but it will also include everyone that's already typed. And this is for the signed magazine. The signed magazine. I'm just seeing if there's anything I've actually missed. I've got a little, oh, I've got my booklet here, All right. <laughs> Just give it a few seconds. Ah, here's one more question before we draw that winner. Um, how did you feel the first time you read the script or story? What was your initial reaction the first time you read it? Benjamin, you should go first. You read it first. <laughs> um... Uh, that was a complex uh, moment, but uh, I was like, oh my god, David make a crazy story this time, and <laughs> we need to... that, that's too much bending. But but the cool thing is, um, you have the V1 and V2 and the v V3 and the V4, and you have a lot of changements, like imagine, I don't say that but imagine the game maybe will have four characters at the beginning and, and, and change to three characters and you have a lot of scene was delayed, another scene was add, the ending was uh, changing all of the time for the best and and yeah all the time it was like exciting and, and to be honest I was like we will never be able to shoot that and we arrived finally to shoot <laughs> I think uh, the first time I read the script, I was just incredibly, incredibly excited because uh, Amelia and I live in Los Angeles. We audition for all kinds of projects. And uh, there was just something that I, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if it was manifested or how it came to me in the universe, but uh, I was just really thinking, what did I want to do with acting specifically? And when I really boiled it all down, it was about, uh, movement and about voice and about a lot of the things I learned at theater school and so I landed on performance capture and in my sort of like declaring for myself that performance capture was like what I was going to focus on and try to do um, somebody sent me a Facebook message like maybe a day or two later with a trailer for this video game saying you have no idea how incredible this uh, animation in video games has become check this out and the trailer was for Beyond Two Souls, which coincidentally uh -huh. uh, Benjamin Dibling was on set for. And uh, and so 
I was really, really, really incredibly excited to start to do a project like that because I'd been so excited about what I'd seen the, the company had done before. So to read the script for me, it was all about trying to learn how Quantic Dream games work and how the story was going to be laid out, how the script was going to be laid out. And so I played through Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls when I was working on the script of Detroit so that I could kind of wrap my head around how the player influences the story. And as an actor, how do you prepare a script when you have no clear beginning, middle, and end. That's all going to be decided by the player. What about you, Amelia, when you read the script? Um, I didn't read the full script. <laughs> I just, um, I read little bits of your script when I was helping you run lines. And then I read the Tracy's, um, the Tracy scenes. And when I read that one, I, immediately it hit me in a very, like, just deep place. It's... It was very sad, um, and so I was very uh, excited to get to, to play with those characters and try and keep it in a more upward swing because it's easy with the scenes that are very, without spoiling, kind of emotional uh, to, to let it twist into something darker. So I wanted to try and keep keep it up, keep the, an upward momentum with mm -hmm. it, but uh um, video game scripts are completely different than film scripts or TV scripts because they have all these different permutations. So it looks very different. It, it's, it's, uh, it definitely takes a little bit of time to get used to reading it and um, deciphering what it means. And, and I can add something. It's, it's really important, the script, but you have two magic moments when we make a game like Detroit. The first moment is when we direct actor on set because for me is really the first time we give life to the project like for me, of course is my point of view but it's crazy all all the things you imagine is at this moment create you you, you it's, a, it's a moment when the actor give life at the character you have in mind for maybe one or two years and and I remember David told me that at the beginning of the project, he said, you will see you have two magic moments. The first time is when the performance capture arriving in game. And the second time is when the music is mm. on the project. And I was like, yeah, but I will see. And yeah, right. <laughs> and, 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 and that was crazy because I remember like the first moment we direct um, on set, we was like, oh my God, it's crazy. We need to share that with people, but people will, of the, um, of Contigrim will uh, have realized only when the performance capture arriving in game. And and that was crazy. I remember I was walking on the studio and people was like, oh my God, I see this moment and it's really cool. And I love the dialogue between Hank and Connor and this kind of thing. It's, it's so good to know your opinions on that. Like it's, it's a lot, I think it's a lot more, uh, a lot different. I can't even think of the words right now. It, it's different to what we would expect when you you first read it. I think as a, a somebody who plays the game and a viewer who's just watching this, I don't think, I don't think those initially come to mind when we think of that question and think, what is it you're going to answer? And also with how it comes to life in those like magical moments, as you say, say, it's awesome to know when those are and when it really hits you. Um, because we definitely know where they are in the game when we play them. There is more than, more than just a couple. <laughs> um, it's a pretty powerful game. Um, we're going to draw another winner. Uh, now this is for the yes. magazine. And that winner is... Repper. Repper, are you in the chat? Congratulations, Repper. Congratulations. Congratulations. Are you still here? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. While we wait for him to speak in the chat, if Repper is here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and um, say that once again, Brian is going to be streaming the game, the second part of the game of where he's at on Sunday on, on his channel. And again, there is a link in the chat for that. Please go check him out. Please go be there to support him. He's done an amazing job as, at acting, as have the rest of them and the shooting director, Benjamin, and putting it together. Um, so please go check it out and see what their reactions are because like he said some of his reactions are first hand he hasn't seen those parts yet because he only knows his parts in the actual story and everything else has been sort of he's he's you've stayed away from it so that you can play it and experience it 
our first it's time. It's been really hard to not just play through this game over and over again. Mm -hmm. Like I, I really am, I really yeah. am pausing in between, and I'm going to play again on Sunday. But I'm so excited to get back into it. Hey, hey, Ben, real quick, is our friend still with you, or did he have to go? Yeah, yeah, I, w I will call him right now. <laughs> okay, so Cyborg Angel, we have a special, uh, a special, special guest. Oh, okay. That we want to introduce you to. Okay. Uh, so Cyborg reached out, did I want to do this chat interview thing, and it's slowly grown. Amelia has joined us, Benjamin Dibling has joined us, but we have someone else that I think is not going to get as much uh, round of applause as he deserves for working on this my project. Uh-huh, uh-oh. Uh has such a cool chair. <laughs> we ah, gotta get a chair like that. I know. That. Yeah, sorry, it's a mess behind me. Sorry. No, you're looking good, Benjamin. I had you're, to, you're uh... backlit. My dog keeps opening the door, um, so she's here. That's right. We have Igby. Our, our cat won't leave us alone right <laughs> yeah. now, so that's that's how it is. Hello. Oh, there you Hi. go. Hi. Jean Charles. Oh, bonjour, uh, Jean Charles. Everybody. Hello. Bonjour. So it uh -huh. it would uh, Jean Charles. Do you want to introduce yourself, or can I say who you are? Yeah, you can. Yeah. So, uh, I get this question almost every single day, Jean Charles. Did did I do all of the stunts for Connor? The answer <laughs> is you can make a clip of this. It's all Jean Charles. <laughs> you had is, it here, this guys. This is Connor. This is Connor oh. in stunt form, among other <laughs> among other uh, characters as well. Jean Charles also some of the SWAT. He was a stand-in for some other characters. But uh, anyway, anytime Connor's doing something wow. that's so cool, I couldn't have possibly done it. It's Jean Charles. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Clarify, That's Jean Charles was amazing, amazing on set, and and you have two incredible actor, <laughs> <laughs> two incredible actor was uh, working with uh, me in body acting. It was Jean Charles and Alex Martin, and both was incredible, and they give life to the stunt of Connor and Marcus, mm -hmm. and yeah, and that's crazy. Remember. That's, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us and welcome and good to have you on the on the show as well. Um, guys, yeah, can we out. get a load of hype in the chat for that? And I'm also going to redraw the winner um, just so we've got somebody who responds. So yeah, continue. Sorry, Brian, continue. <laughs> no, no, that's cool. I'm just going to throw uh, Jean Charles. Is it okay if I put your Instagram into the uh, into the chat for people to check it out? Oh, of course, yeah. Okay, cool. And is, yeah, this guy is crazy. <laughs> he, 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 he make jump from bridge and this kind of thing. He put fire on his body and yeah. <laughs> just for fun. Wow, wow, if that's you guys amazing. Saw, um, Mission Impossible Five most recently. I think JC was on set for MI Five, right? Oh, you have a permit yeah. by the way in the yeah. chat. You can now put that link in the chat. And if a mod can grab yeah. that and make a command, or spam it in the chat um, for the from the mods as well, please. So if you put it in the chat, they should be able to grab it. Um, also, Esli, you won that magazine. I've redrawn a winner. And you did respond in the chat. Congratulations. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> cool. I'll put this uh, link in there right now. But you guys, give uh, give Jean Charles some love because Connor is only yes, as cool most... as Connor is because of JC. Most certainly, guys. You know well, what to do. Go check out their socials. Go check out the links. Everyone who's here with me today, if you type in their first name with an exclamation mark at the front of it, in the chat, it will bring up all of their socials, including Brian's Twitch channel. So make sure you're going to check them all out there. Um, I think, is there anything else that you guys wanted to share? Just enjoy the game. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. A good game. We um, made this game for you guys, so it. it's, uh, it's wonderful to hear your experiences uh, playing through it. And if you're going to play on Twitch and... You want me to jump in, tag me and Benjamin and Amelia and Cyborg and we'll pop into your Twitch channel and see you guys playing because I love to see everyone's reactions. That's it, exactly. I'm going to be um, trying out some alternative endings in a second um, after the chat. So I'm going to be going ahead and I think I'm almost coming up to um, the Eden Club. So Ooh. I didn't actually see Ooh. someone at the Whoa. Eden Club when I played ah. it. So it's going to be a first when I play that part. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be uh, touching on that today. But yes, it's been amazing having you guys here. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that the chat has enjoyed it. Twitch have loved the fact that you've got to answer these questions. And, and I honestly, I'm so grateful that you guys did this. It's been awesome knowing you and speaking with you. 
Um, hey, and I look thank forward... you for having us. No problem at all. I look forward to playing more of the game. Cool. And thank you, everybody, on Twitch for tuning in. This is so much fun. I mean, it's really cool to play a character in a video game and then play that video game, but it is way, way, way cooler to do it with, like, a ton of awesome people online. So thank you so much for making this community grow. It's awesome. And again, there are giveaways to be had on Brian's channel on oh, Sunday. Yeah. Do you want to tell them? One? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Give yeah. them the details. Uh, so maybe I'll throw this into the chat too. We we yesterday we crossed fifteen thousand followers on Twitch, which is absolutely insane to me. Uh, when we did the first playthrough on last Sunday, we had two thousand. And I said to my friend, we might make it to 10 by next Sunday. And here we are on Friday and we've got 15. So we've been getting these donations on uh, the channel and we want to contribute them back into the, the community and the channel. So we took all the money that people donated to a video game store in Game Realms and bought three copies of the game that we signed and are going to be given away over the next three streams want to win a physical copy of Detroit Become Human, uh, you can join us on Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, the links are in the channel, but um, we're going to give away one of those. And then we also have a couple more signed things from the premiere event that we're going to give away too. So thank you guys for being part of that. That's it, exactly. Again, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us. It's been really fun. Um, I'm going to get rid of this scene and I'm going to go for just a moment, but I will be back in a second. I'm not going anywhere and we're going to be heading back over to the game and possibly seeing who we didn't see at the Eden Club ah, during my cool. gameplay. Possibly. Thanks so for let's... joining us, uh, Jean-Charles and Benjamin. Yes, thank you very much for being here, both of you and Brian and Amelia. It's been great. Thank you again. And um, Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's all I can say. I'm just I'm overwhelmed right now. This is amazing. Thank you very much. And have an awesome day. Can we get some hype in the chat, guys? Bye-bye.